Welcome to Board Game Archaeologist. We play time-worn games from the past. I'm Hunter. I'm Rob. And today we're looking at Over and Out. Over and Out from Gabriel, 1980, made for two players. The goal of the game is to be the person to correctly guess the pegs in numerical order. So, for example, you want to start with one and go all the way up to 15. Right. And the game really comes with, you have a black and an orange side. They all have individual numbers on it and the playing board and very simple instructions. And simple instructions they are because essentially it is just a matter of guessing which one is first and this one is number one. And then you would put it in your like scoreboard. Right. So it's got to be in numerical order. So when you first start playing this game, you each take a color. You put the numbers in a random order, and then you turn it around, and then th that person has, it's just like concentration, where you've got to remember what you pick up. So if I pick up a four, I got to put it back, and now it's Hunter's turn. And then he would go, I would pick up again, but the goal is to try to remember, well, you know, where you picked up that number so you can try to get your 15 done. And then when you finish the 15, you, whoever's left with a couple, let's say you are because you had one out, you would count your points on here and they would probably be 15, 14, and whatever. <laughs> so your number count's going to be fairly high, which I think is kind of funny because they have it where at 25 you would, you would lose the game, right? As if, yeah, it was only designed for like a couple of rounds maybe. Yeah. It didn't get washed out. Unless each point was one individually. Right, but you don't start, if you start at 15, I think you'd be able to play a longer game if you went backwards with it. Yeah. But they say to go with one. And you're always going to have that. The loser is always going to have 15 minimum. So you're looking at two rounds if you lose twice in a row. And you're talking probably 10 minutes a round, I would guess. Yeah, and maybe it's just because uh, kind of jumping into some pros and cons stuff, it's like this is very much a memory game. It is. It's, it's totally concentration. and Or whatever, flip the whatever card and try to remember what it is. And I, I think, you know, I think it would be good for seniors. I'm a senior, and I think this would probably help me with my memory, and and uh, younger people would probably beat me. <laughs> so, But I I think it's a good game. I, I really can't think of any cons. I love the plastic out of it. I really never saw this game before, and I was at our neighbor Ron and Linda's thrift sale, and uh, they had this, and, and I was really lucky to grab it. And it, I think it's cool. It's plastic. You know, I, I love plastic if you've watched earlier episodes. And all the pieces are there and everything fits good. Very simple to learn and play. I can't think of a con to this game outside <laughs> of there not being a painting on the cover because I, I, I like paintings on the cover. But you know what? I think this is a pretty good game. Yeah, I definitely think that because it, it holds that simplicity of a lot of other games that we've played while having, again, maybe it's just because memory isn't my strongest suit either. <laughs> it be. And it's like, it, it goes a long way with me. Yeah, and it's forever changing. You know, you can put it in any order, any time. You could probably change the rules. You can make it a team thing. You could do anything with it. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. Yeah, and if you want to know more about us, check us out at toyarchaeology.com. You can also find us on Facebook, and please subscribe to us on YouTube. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.